Welcome to the last, final and deciding game for this best of three for the Star Ladder Pro series. It is Central of Year versus Scary Faces. Scary Faces, man, they lost game number one, but game number two, they just wrecked. Central of Year did have out at like 11 and a half minutes in, close enough to that at least. Plus, it was the just craziest of lineups. A Bloodseeker, a Podge, and a Lina. And they raped. What the hell, what world are we living in? <laughs> but we are of course Hellblad TV, I'm Coucher, I'm joined by MRP Dota Man. So, are we gonna see more Pudge? Uh, we'll probably see a Pudge ban if we don't see more Pudge. I'm not sure what the hell happened, but to put it simply, as you said, they raped. So, <laughs> someone get the rape whistle out, uh, because scary faces need to, need to, uh, Continue that momentum in central uh, uh, fear needs to gather themselves for this one. So this is a deciding game, guys. Loser does get eliminated here. Game three. I know game two didn't even seem like it happened. You went to take a piss and it was over. But 11-minute win for SFZ in that one. And we'll see if they're able um, to translate that into an early good, a good early game in game three. So central fear, finally, after two games of facing the Omni Knight, they've had enough. So banning that out. But Scary Faces, well, yeah, that's what I wanted to ask. Will they respect Banda Terror Blade and exactly what they did? So, two of the heroes that I, I guess both teams would have been comfortable with taken out now. But also a Bloodseeker respect ban, man. <laughs> Bloodseeker first phase ban just doesn't make any sense. I don't know that they needed to respect ban the Terror Blade. I mean, in game one, they left him totally unchecked. And in my opinion, he even made a couple of questionable item decisions. He picked up a butterfly 20 minutes in. There was only one outer tier tower left on the map. They only had the Slark who was offering right clicks at the time that weren't even that scary. They had tons of magical damage from the Queen of Pain, as well as the Omni Knight and Earthshaker. And uh, raw HP would have been much better for him at that point. But when you leave a Terror Blade completely with free farm, it doesn't really matter what your lineup is or how you can deal with his illusions. He's just going to win the game by killing. Once you guys lose one engagement, he'll kill three lanes of racks as he did so i'm um, not sure that it really warrants a ban here but either way scary faces don't want to see it here and uh, with the way they played last game they can certainly grab up a couple of bans that aren't necessarily worthy and still win here so tidehunter first pick here from cof so they'll pick up a strong hero in case sfz looks to ball up once again yeah for scary faces though i guess now brewmaster is available if they want to go for that one definitely mm -hmm. a strong enough hero to go for in the first phase if you want to go for supports, Skyrath Mage is always available. If not though, you can go Lina, Patch. why the hell not? Although, to be honest, the Legion Commander, for example, for their own lineup at the moment wouldn't be too bad, because right. that duel is one of the few things that you cannot crack and shell off if you're, t if you're a Tidehunter, so if you get the duel before the Ravage, that's pretty much f uh, fighting without Ravage on the enemy side. Yeah. I mean, it does offer him the possibility to buy back as long as there are some towers available, but it is a very good kill, and you can turn it into a clean kill and just back off if he does buy back, and that'll put a big um, fork into their plans in terms of their economy, allowing him to get up a blink, arcanes, a refresher even later on. And so, uh, yeah, the Tidehunter is tipping their hand a little bit, but it's a strong enough hero that you can pick it up this early on and not be punished too heavily for it. Scary Faces, in speaking of strong heroes, going to pick up a very potent support duo in two prioritized support heroes in the Venge and the Skyra. So they will have the obvious uh, Magic Missile Mystic Flare combo with the Ancient Seal to buff up the damage from the Magic Missile if it gets off first. But uh, for obvious reasons, they do have a lot of positioning offered, and the Silence is good as well to deal with the Ravage, as you mentioned, the Duel being able to deal what, with that. Well, I'm just happy to see a Vengeful. I've always been a fan of that hero, but in this series so far, we haven't gotten it, although it mm. is a rather popular hero at the moment anyway. Yep. Just... It offers so much. You can go for early erosion. You have a solid enough stun, I guess. It can be disjointed by a couple of heroes, but it's still strong. But Central Fear going for an IO now. Is is this a tiny ban incoming now from Scary Faces, or are they maybe more afraid of something like a Chaos Knight, for example? Hmm. It, I mean, I mean, Tiny Wisp is always very strong. It's something that I have seen run actually a couple of times in the last few days. Uh, C9 ran it with their new lineup with Big Daddy, or at least their stand-ins for now, and absolutely rolled over Team Fire in uh, DAC. So definitely something that's possible to run here. Um, 
It definitely is. The Avalanche Toss is a combo that will blow up both the Skywrath and the Vengeful until they get up some decent item progression. So it is something to be worried about. And there it is, as you mentioned, the Tiny Band will come out immediately away from that. But uh, there is still the CK. There is still the Gyrocopter, which isn't bad either. The Max Homing Missile is pretty good now. You can force staff it. So uh, that will pretty much spell a kill on either of these supports as well. Uh, so there are still a lot of heroes. There's the Sven that you can still buff up. The Skyrath has very low base armor, so Sven will chop him down pretty quickly. And uh, we will see the Brewmaster ban from COF, so as you mentioned, they left that in the pool for scary faces when they picked up the Tide, and uh, they will ban that out in the second phase, as well as the Brood. Naga Siren ban once again from scary faces, so I guess something they just don't want to deal with it. Not sure if this is something uh, that Klasinki or MDL or Laz Shorty plays, really. Uh, or even, I guess it would be RNT, Klasinki, or uh, Laz Shorty. But yeah, I don't really uh, know why they're banning the Naga in this particular matchup. It doesn't really put um, too much detriment to their lineup, but I guess there's something that they don't like to face. And they will pick up the Queen of Pain here. So once again, going to go back and try that after the Game 1 fail uh, for the for Shadow A in the offlane. Well, there it is, the Chaos Knight. I think Scary Faces might have a little bit at least anticipated the Chaos Knight as well with the Queen of Pain pick. Mm -hmm. Just because Queen of Pain offers quite a lot of AoE damage to deal with the Illusions. Not only that, Blink, Scream of Pain, or Scream of Pain and Sonic Wave, suddenly IO is no longer. So yeah. that's that's a decent way to deal with it. Also, Sky of Mage boosting up the Scream of Pain. Well, yeah. like, the, the thing is though, how safely can you Blink in at the moment and try to get the IO? Well, I feel like you may have to, just because Reality Rift can bring you in regardless. Um, so I, I really think that Scary Faces is going to have to control the tempo. They do have ways to do that with the swap, as well as the Concussive Shot, and even the Shadow Strike to a lesser extent. Uh, but as you mentioned, I, I really feel like that Ancient Seal um, is going to be extremely impactful with this Queen of Pain. You get an Ancient Seal, even an Ancient Seal Scream of Pain off at max level, you're talking about a 45% increased magical damage with a 300 damage nuke. Uh, so you're talking something like 440 before resistances into an IO. And with the... Uh, with the Sonic Wave, that's definitely a dead wisp. So we'll be interesting to see how they're able to couple that up and if they're able to get it off more often than not. But they will round out the lineup here with a Drow Rangers. Still one core to be picked up here for Scary Faces, but the Gust is very nice into the Tide as well as the relocating combo of the Chaos Knight IO. It's definitely not too bad. At the moment, though, both Queen of Pain and the Drow most likely will have to invest into PKBs. You mm -hmm. definitely cannot afford to get Chaos Bolted, especially if it should max out stun now with the Ancient Depression being there. Even more so, I guess. And yeah. also up against Ravage, you really need the BKBs. But Scary Faces, the one good thing they're running so far at least with all ranged and all of the heroes will benefit from the Precision Aura. Mm -hmm. But I, mean, I just have to say, I I'm pumped to see Chaos Knight. That hero can be so damn strong, especially with Io backing him up. Of course now, Scary Faces... Are they going to go for like an aggro try of their own up against IO Chaos Knight, Ancient Apparition, or... It, it's not that strong of a try lane if you're Central of Fear. I mean, Chilling Touch is always a yeah. little bit scary to go up against, but... Just free ranged up against Chaos Knight, and IO can't really do anything either there. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if we will see a defensive try from COF. I, I, we may see the dual lane mid with the IO CK, depending on the mid laner for Scary Faces, which will probably be Queen of Pain. So in that sense, yeah, maybe the dual lane will be, they will be dissuaded from picking up that dual lane mid and go with the defensive try, as you mentioned. Um, aggro try for COF did not work out last game, so we'll see if Scary Faces is ballsy enough to commit to that themselves. They do have a decent lane with the Vengeful Skywrath Drow if they, can, if they choose to run that, but um, the range on Venge isn't really the best, so... It will be interesting to see what they do. They do pick up the Puck, who does benefit from that Precision Aura, so it probably will be an offlane Puck here, and they'll have the Queen of Pain in the mid. They ran the offlane Queen of Pain in Game 1 to no avail, really. Scary Face is not able to get up the farm for Shadow A there. He got a really late Aghanims, and by that point, a Terrible Hit was already 3 or 4 slotted uh, with Boots of Travel, Sanj, and Yasha, uh, as well as his drums, so... Really don't expect the Queen of Bane to be in a lesser farming role here. So, yeah, I could we could definitely see an aggro try with the safe lane solo puck here uh, versus the Tide should have a really good time. So, for Scary Faces, 
how do they even lane this? I guess they have a couple of ways to do so. Mm-hmm. If the, for all I know, there could even be a Queen of Pain aggressive try, to be honest. I've seen it a couple of times. Yeah. But scary faces, the, the one thing that is scary for them is that if they get caught by a Chaos Bolt, they mm-hmm. will most likely die. All of their heroes, unless you have a BKB, they're not all that tanky. Yeah, certainly so. I mean, they do have the swap out. They do have the counter initiation of the magic missile. And they do have the gust from the drought if any of those heroes are not um, locked down by that uh, chaos bolt. They do also have the waning rift and the dream coil. So they have some ways to deal with it. Uh, I would expect a safe lane puck with an aggro try with the queen of pain in mid with the aggro try centered around the drow ranger. But we could definitely see dual lanes here. Uh, I wouldn't be too angry at them for committing that. There's not too much kill potential because the IO will be in the tri lane. Also, they don't have to. They will have a free cold feed proc off of the chaos bolt most times. And chaos bolt is extremely spammable. That's something that's underrated about this. Well, on a 10 second cooldown with the IO to keep your mana pool up, you can just throw those out um, for even potentially harass and wait for RNG and for a long stun to finally go in on it. So. It will be interesting to see how Scary Faces does lane it, as you mentioned. But it looks like they will be looking for a mid laner here for COF, uh, perhaps one against the Queen of Pain. They could, co- they could go for something like a Viper here to allow them to close the distance on the Drow Ranger. Even a Storm Spirit isn't bad. Uh, they do lack a little bit of initiation. And as you mentioned, if they do get some initiation on these heroes, they will be able to blow most of them up, especially with the Ravage. But they'll pick up the Invoker here, so a little bit of global support perhaps. Maybe he goes Quas Wax against this Queen of Pain puck, but it'll be interesting to see uh, what he opts for in terms of his build. So, I mean, I, I can't even say which lineup is like the more interesting one. I guess I, I'm going to have to go with Chaos Knights because it is the less seen hero for the most part. Oh, of course, now the Invoker. I'm kind of expecting x because Chaos Bolt into Sunstrikes should be easy setups. Although it might be Vex as well, although I'm not too sure how much value a Vex would actually get. There's still yeah. quite a huge mana pool on most of Scary Faces heroes, so I would think Exhort, also some extra pushing power for them, for example. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I generally think Exhort is the stronger of the two builds, but I wouldn't mind Quas Wex versus Scary Faces lineup. They are pretty mana dependent, and they do have f- fairly large mana pools on most of their heroes, but if they don't have mana, they're not really doing any damage aside from the Drow Ranger, so... So, to introduce the lineups as well for the last game of the series for today, or well, for this particular series at least, RNT will be playing the Tidehunter offlane with Last Shorty on the Invoker mid, and the tri lane will be Shock on the Ancient Operation MDL playing the IO, and the last one will be Klasinki on the Chaos Knight. Yeah, and for the side of Scary Faces, Shadow A once again will take the Queen of Pain to the offlane. We'll have State 21 on the puck in the mid lane with Eknard, Quista, and a bash on the Ventral Spirit, Drow Ranger, and Skywrath, respectively, in that safe lane try. And they boost out, no aggro try coming there. So they're choosing to just give some coin a free farm to the Chaos Knight, which might come and backfire. Mm-hmm. Of course, then again, they're going to try to shut down a Tide Hunter, so no fast blink ravage or something like that. But one thing that already happened Central Fear managed to sentry down this ward, so they can actually double pull through. I hate Queen of Pain offlane. I mean, I hate to flame, but I just hate Queen of Pain offlane. The puck is so much more survivable with the phase shift up against this trio. All she has to do is phase a Chaos Bolt and she'll survive every time. Uh, Meanwhile, the Queen of Pain, even if it blinks away after the Chaos Bolt, if the Cold Feet proc hits after the blink, they can easily chase her down with a tether move speed. And I feel like she's so much less survivable. There is also a higher cast animation on the blink than the phase shift, which is instant. And uh, the cooldown is pretty long until you max it out. So... I really dislike the laning choice from Scary Faces, but we'll see how it ends up working out. Oh, immediate harass coming out, just tether into Reality Rift. Reality Rift 50 mana only, I guess it's not that costly for you anyway. Mm-hmm. Forcing out the blink of Queen of Pain as well. Just didn't really expect that early of an aggression, but I guess that's the best way to try to deal with it. Don't yeah. let the Queen of Pain just feel comfortable in the lane. Yeah, Queen of Pain does have a really nice base attack damage for a ranged hero, so she is able to get some last hits if she has any lane sustainability, but they did force her to scale the blink, so she won't have the Scream of Pain. Top lane RNT is going to take a little bit of harass from a bash, but he's going to trade an Anchor Smash for that, and the Skywrath, pretty low base armor, so does take quite a bit of damage. 
Um, but Last Shorty in the mid is going to have a little bit of a tough time up against State 21's Puck as a few spirits go into the face of Shadow A. He's actually below half HP now. We'll have to salve up, presumably. Does have seven tangos, though, so maybe he can look just to stay in lane with a tango for the time being. Man, that harass. If only they had Chilling Touch or they would have been a little mm -hmm. bit closer. Of course, probably had the Chilling Touch come out immediate blink away from Cop as well, most likely. So, they're just playing around with it. Chaos Knight, Queen of Pain, he knew. He had vision since his own creeps were pushing out Chaos Knight at the time. So, he knew there was no real light drift or Chaos Bolt to come. So, he was just playing it safe, reserving all the mana he could. And now, the creeper is pushing into the tower. So, that's gonna be like level 3.5 for Shadow Wave now, at least. So... Not doing that bad for an offlaner two minutes in. Tidehunter yep. at the same time, level one and a half. Yeah, level-wise, doing certainly very well. I still feel like it's a hero that really needs farm, though. Uh, Orchid would be very, very good up against the Tidehunter, as well as the Invoker, even, to an extent. Uh, but the bottle has come out for MDL now, so a lot of lane sustainability there. Also, we'll be able to spam out the Chaos Bolt and the Reality Rift and uh, start to harass and zone out Shadow Ace, Queen of Pain. Good lane. Eknart rotating in with an invisibility rune has levels two levels up here so if they can hit a level two orb there's the magic missile coming out illusory orb does hit after very nicely placed one last right click up the hill and they'll find first blood on last shorty yeah, and a really important hero to get it on as well the puck an earlier blink on puck means just way more control for mm -hmm. you and of course puck has a really good time in the middle in any way you have great base damage as it is Start with an alt talisman as well, and not only that, you're gonna have precision aura to just give you that little bit extra, even to just what you already had. Yeah. So looking good for them so far. Three minutes in, only one kill has happened, so definitely not as action packed as game number one. But looking at the last hits, Invoker, he's three and two compared to fifteen and one mid lane. What? Yeah, that's a little bit of a stomp going on in the mid lane there. You wouldn't expect that much. You do expect a lead for State 21, but you wouldn't expect that much discrepancy. Reality Rift, bottom lane, instant blink out by Shadow A. Chaos Bolt really needs to come out first there. Um, but they will zone him out of lane for the time being. But Shadow A, doing very well, almost level 4 now, needs one last hit or one creep experience, worth of experience for that. I mean, I just cannot wrap my head around how Invoker is losing that much. I guess he went for like early point into Quas. Mm -hmm. Then just didn't have the extra damage needed immediately to try to outlast it. Puck, Puck of course, really up there with the denies as well. 15 denies. So he's really just making good use of his high base damage and the precision aura. Yeah, Precision Aura definitely is somewhat of a factor in this mid lane. And if, as you mentioned, not going for that Exhort earlier on if he didn't. Uh, definitely stifles his ability to last it here. He also went for an early level in Invoke, so... Uh, loser, I'm gonna go out just to clean up the wave and zone back last shorty for a bit. He has opted for Quas Exhort here, so... We'll be able to provide a little bit of global support, uh, as well as a little bit of push for his team. State 21 gonna pick up the Bounty Rune top lane. Illusion Rune goes to the Queen of Pain bottom, but she doesn't have a bottle, so just gonna deny that from the Wisp. It's something still, I mean, we're rather low on mana at the moment, so cannot continue with the Spirit Harass if nothing else. Although the pulling is coming through by Shock at the same time. They even have a tree cleared up for the double pull if they want to, although top lane Eckhart will go in. There's the slow one to RNT first, Kraken Shell only level 1, it's not gonna be enough I believe with the Frost Arrows coming through, a few more right clicks and an Arcane Vault. It is gonna be the kill, so 2-0 for Scary Faces. The start, definitely pretty damn good, and Queen of Pain, although she's really lacking on last hits. Being level 5 against a tri lane, definitely not too shabby. Yeah, the one bright spot is that Klasinki's farming fairly well, but Quista's farming even better with 25 last hits. State 21 is absolutely crushing everyone with 30 now on the board. He will commit the coil mid. Concussive Shock comes out as well. There's the Illusory Orb. They do have one more arc game. Well, not even going to be needed. Just a right click. Look and at the build uh, on Invoker. Two points into Wex now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Early deafening blast? Is that what we're looking for here? I have oh, no idea. RNT, magic missile, frost arrows as well. Can he crack and shut them off? He can, but it's not gonna be enough. One more right click. Eknard picks up the kill. 4-0. My god, and this invoker... At least he can ghost walk. So. Yeah, I, I guess, the, as you mentioned, that point... He did intend to go Quaswex, and that point in Exart was simply for last hitting. Um, but either way, yeah, Just very get questionable. Just the blades of attack, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very, very Maybe he was like, I'm going for Exhort, but then he was like, 
kind of need Tornado to stop ganks on me or mm -hmm. maybe he was like classic he cannot be as aggressive as he would like so I'm not gonna get as much value out of a Sunstrike for example. I, I have no idea but it's just not working for him. He's getting more than tripled in last hits. Yeah, 36 and 20 to the 10 and 4 is crazy. The deny is five times that of his own for state 21. And Treads picked up here for CK. There's also the boots and the bottle up on the wisp. So they will be able to start making things happen. But I'll only level 4 and not in lane right now. Uh, so really needs to start finding some experience for that early relocate. Around 7 minutes, you should have that level 6 if you're sitting in lane most of the time. And Eknart farming top on that vengeful spirit. Also looking for level 5. Mid lane, Tornado out onto 2. But there's the Ancient Seal. Jaunt forward, one more right click. And Lao Shorty going to fall for the third time already in this one. Oh my god. Who played the Legion Commander last game? Lao Shorty. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I sure he did. Uh, yeah, it's been a rough couple of games for him, for sure. Um, not sure what he played in game one. Can't quite remember what the offlaner was for COF. I might have been an axe. There was an axe somewhere. Yeah, was yeah, it, it was I, the axe. Was RNC it the faces the axe? I have no idea. I so, um, but either way. 5-0, man. Scary faces. Looking good and really classic is the only one just doing anything it looks like. Yeah, yeah, certainly so. I mean, the, the AA is pretty much rotating around here for Shock. He's still only level 3 on the AA. Taking a look at the level chart, he's right at the bottom of the barrel. Below both Eknart and Abash. I mean, the Wisp is doing decently well, but still without a relocate is pretty much useless at this point. Especially that considering that no one is really in lane for them to gank. And there's a level 6 on Shadowway already, so just a Sonic Wave. That's 300, um, 300 pure damage, 290 pure damage. As well as the, uh, well, Scream of Pain hasn't been maxed out. So interesting build from the Shadow Strike there. But Chaos Bolt, Reality Rift onto the Queen of Pain. The Blink is here, but the Spirits and the Right Click will be able to bring down Shadow Wave. That's a big kill, and that'll give level 6 to the Wisp. Yeah, that's just finally they get the kill there as well, Queen of Pain. Relocate in the river. And Magic Missile going to catch Klesinki on the low ground, but he will get Reality Rifted back. Nice crit. There's a 3 second Chaos Bolt as well. And Klesinki going to find that kill. Lose your orb down to the low ground, but he's not going to jump forward. As everyone a little bit too healthy and relocate back into lane. So that's a nice couple of pickups there for the IOCK combo. Mid lane though, the dream foil is used, but they have the dust. They see a shorty anyway. A few more right clicks. Shadow away. Oh god, that was so unnecessary. <laughs> but a kill is a kill. Kill's a kill, and that's a blink for state 21. Eight and a half minutes into the game. And that's a huge pickup for this puck here. He'll be able to start owning this Invoker if he hasn't already. Four deaths up onto Last Shorty's Invoker. Not even level 7 quite yet. Below the Queen of Pain in the offlane and even the Wisp for MDL are tied with the Wisp roughly. So very, very rough start for Last Shorty. I mean, this Chaos Knight is going to have to snowball like no other. Pretty much to bring back the game, of course. Mm -hmm. At one point, they're going to have the Ravage as well. So their team fight is still going to be pretty good. At least if Ancient Depression ever hits level 6 at the moment, 3.5 only. So he really needs to be present for a couple of kills as well to just kind of reach that level 6 somehow magically. Or do we have some Ancient stacks? Yes, we do. So he can just go near the Ancients when the Tidehunter is farming them up as well to try to recover that way. Yeah. Well, I mean, something we haven't spoken of is Quist has been free farming totally. 56 CS, 33 denies. And does have already the Mask of Madness and his treads up as well as 400 gold in addition to that. So perhaps completes a couple of those Wraith Bands with those two circlets. Buffing up the damage of himself, the Puck, the Vengeful, the Queen of Pain as well as the Skyrath. So the whole, the whole lineup for Scary Faces is benefiting from that Precision Aura. And uh, he'll probably start to build into some agility fairly soon. And has been farming well. Is level 8 ahead of Klesinki's level 7 CK even after those two kills. So, looking at the graphs early, it's actually not that bad. Nine mm -hmm. minutes in, about the 3k net worth lead, XP 3k as well. But it, it's it's really just the this early of a blink on puck is the scariest type aspect of this. And also in Walker, I mean, is he still going for like a Midas at one point, or are you kind of forced into a Midas already even? I, I <laughs> it's really hard to say. I mean. It, if he's going Quas Wex, which he does have three levels in it now, 
I would expect just the phase boots to come out. Uh, you're not as heavily level reliant as you are when you're Exorb. Um, but he's so far behind that maybe Midas is really the only choice here. And they look to create space for him with the relocate ganks as well as the ravage. But it will be interesting to see what he goes. I mean, they are pretty much built to fight. Fair, as soon as they get up that Ice Blast and the Ravage. The Ravage is up fairly soon, but still only level 5 on the Tidehunter. Skywrath Mage for a Bash is level 6 now. So things looking really poor aside from Klasinki and MDL for COF. So we'll see how much the Skywrath Mage will actually make happen as well with his level 6 now. Mm -hmm. He's rather close to getting Arcane Boots finished up as well. Unless Mangeful Spirit forces him to buy some just wards or... Detection and look at this Eknard already carrying dust two sentries in the stash as well They just they probably want to keep on killing the invoker and they just want to make sure the coast walk does not get it in the way Yep, chopped down the tower a bit in the top lane did Quista so that's about a two-thirds health at this point It looks like we have a smoke rotation in the off lane for the dire side Eknard accompanied by shadow Way and Abash the ancient seal into the Scream of Pain is real. There's no Sonic Wave available, still 70 seconds on cooldown, but they can blow up this Wisp fairly soon if MDL is a little bit too far forward. Here comes Eknar, gonna pop the smoke. Magic Missile is there. Where's the Ancient Seal? Mystic Flare gonna be dropped as well. And Klasinki did. Yeah, what? that's... Uh, there's there no is escape a possibility for a Tether Relocate. I, I don't think the Relocate would be fast enough. Mm-hmm. At least when Shadow Wave... Never mind, his ultimate is on cooldown, so maybe... Okay, he saw range and couldn't even click. He was running a little bit, I don't know. Yeah, oh. it was a little dicey the way he ran to the side. There's the relocate being channeled, not going to be there in time. And State comes in, but either way. Klasinki, the one bright spot so far for their lineup at 4k net worth is brought down now. The relocating Wisp is about to come back as well. Eknart waiting in the wings. He'll tether back though. To Shock, who was waiting there. The Loser Orb will be a little bit short. The Coil is there, though, on the Wisp. Queen of Pain running forward as well. And they will be getting the Waning Rift off. I guess the Waning Rift did miss, actually. The Ancient Seal was there. Arcane Bolt, not enough, however. And Shock is here with an Ice Vortex. There is a Ravage as well. They can hit this at least on two, but... They're just going to get the Skyrath Mage. It seems he'll be the sky uh, Sacrificial Lamb. Reality Rift, however, on to State 21. He'll be able to Orb out. No, he'll get Chaos Bolted down. And they'll bring down two, so very over-aggressive play from Scary Faces. And feeding a couple over after the lag. Last shorty going to go towards mid, find a little bit of farm. He should find his level 8 here, so we'll finally start to recover as the Wisp joins him in lane. But meanwhile, Quista takes out the tier 1 in the Radiant off lane. Didn't even use Mask of Madness for that, so might even think about going for the tier 2 straight after this. I mean, he's hurting enough to even maybe fully take the tier 2 unless somebody rotates in. Mm -hmm. But that chase, it was just way too deep by them. And the good thing for Central Fear, they didn't even have to use the Ravage for that. Yeah. And Ayo, just look at this farm, look at the network. He is second highest on Central Fear. That's <laughs> that's not the position you usually see when it's like a four position Ayo. Means every now and then Ayo's <laughs> actually are that active and they get the kills, they're a part of them. Still though, this Ayo, he's gonna maybe have to get like an early mech to try to survive the burst of scary faces. Yeah, certainly so. And with the th three silences that they, they offer in the Gust and the Waning Rift and the Ancient Seal, he's going to be hard-pressed to be able to be super mobile with his tether and good with his re defensive relocate. So he does have the earn up now as well as 1,100 gold, so that's not bad for him at all. Uh, but State 21 does have the blink, so he still will be very susceptible. As you see, Last Shorty playing extremely defensive in this mid lane. Only 850 HP on that Invoker. Did opt for the Phase Boot, so will be a Quas Wex Invoker here. He has maxed out Wex thus far, so interesting to see that one point in Exor. Smoke Rotation from Eknart, Abash, as well as Quista. And it looks like they'll jump into the Roche Pit with the Frost Arrows and the Wave of Terror and the Precision Aura. They should be able to bring this down fairly quickly, and they are melting him even without a Medallion at this point. They did group up a little bit too much, so all of them got slammed, but I guess in the end it doesn't matter too much. So... They're going to get Roshan now, Aegis most likely goes to the Throw Ranger just so that he can actually mask of hands and not be too afraid for his life. Yeah. Although I still have to say they took way too much damage tanking it up like that. Mm -hmm. Just getting slammed twice. Still though, it, it's all fine. They had a couple of healing sounds, a couple of tangos and somebody still left as well. Ball charge on Shadow if he wants to use them. And looks like State 21. He's going for a Midas as well. It's... It's... 
not that uncommon of a build these days on Pucks, just go for Blink first and then go for Midas. Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting choice. When you're this far ahead, I would even like something like a Yules or a Dagon much better. Um, but either way, not a bad choice, and we'll allow him to continue to accrue a level advantage here. Blink picked up by Quista in the meantime. He's going to pick up his level 11, and he'll probably be able to bring down this tower after the Glyph if there aren't immediate TP rotations. And there is a relocate. There's also four TP, so Shock, the only one without a TP right now. Um, but it looks like the Drow going to take this down with relative ease without being contested. So easy towers, but in the meantime, the Tide did farm up the Ancients with Shock being close by, so he has his level 6 now, so the team fight just got even better, mm -hmm. or well, not even better, but it got better if they can actually string it together somehow. Yeah. The Alien of Courage though picked up on Vengeful, the physical damage output that their team has, just purely thanks to the Precision Aura now, it is ridiculous, if anybody gets stunned and actually has to face that kind of physical damage, I don't think anybody can take it. Chaos Knight is rather tanky, but even him, without the armlet being finished, might just go down. But Ice Blast is flying, it's gonna connect only onto state 21. At least they know that Ancient Depression is level 6 now, Tornado will not hit anything. So, just nothing really comes of it. Yeah, they relocated bottom to try and find Quista, but he, he had already blinked out, so... Uh, Io will go back to the top lane, Mr. Clear Sonic wave out onto the mid, and they'll pick off Laz Shorty once again, he seems to be just that easy kill target every time they go in age is still on quest he'll blink forward in the bot lane gust onto klasinki few more strikes he's gonna get into the tree line try and tp out but quest will find him and why did he cancel that tp not exactly sure i think he might have made it there but the creeps are gonna block in quest he'll be able to blink out though and one more right click he'll bring down the chaos knight and without the gust there i don't know if he would have got him before the t uh tp but either way uh, quest probably finding that kill it would have been pretty damn close just because Krista, he was next to the Chaos Knight, so he didn't yeah. get the Marshmanship bonus anymore thanks to that. So I, I think the better choice would have been to try to just TP out, hope mm -hmm. that you will make it. But they're going to lose a tier 2 now as well, Klasinki falling farther and farther behind, whereas the entirety of Scary Faces are pulling ahead. And uh, one fun thing about the Invoker Death there, he was even Ghost Walk and there was no detection. They just randomly popped the Mystic Flare and the Sonic Wave. Well, maybe not totally randomly because they saw him going into the ghost walk, so they could just anticipate somewhat, but even Invis does not save you. Yeah, 1500 gold on Shadow Way. He's got the point booster in tow as well, so he is only 1500 away from that Agonims if that's the build he chooses, and it looks like it will be. Blink does now come out for RNT, though. So maybe, I mean, I mean, the combo from Central of Fear is pretty scary with the Ice Blast, the Ravage, and anything the Invoker can offer in terms of the EMP Tornado, but they just haven't been given a situation to pop it here. They've been picked off one by one, and with the Blink on the Drow Ranger, as well as the Swap from the Venge, and the Blink from the Queen of Pain, they are going to be hard-pressed to find a very good initiation here. But if they do, certainly their team fight co comp is very scary. Yeah, and... If I am finished up the mech as well, the heal is going to be huge. Also, I guess bonus armor will help out somewhat as well against the Precision Aura. Mm -hmm. So, Central Fear, they're by no means out of this, although they are 7 or pretty much 8,000 net worth behind already. 4k in XP as well. It, at some point in this game, I would have expected it to be a lot worse, to be honest, by now. Yeah. But there is going to be a PKB on Krista soon enough. Just needs the Mirfield Hammer for it, which means another 650 gold or so. And with the BKB. What does the throw actually have to be afraid of? Pretty much absolutely nothing. I mean, you, you generally always build a BKB in Tidehunter games on your cores, so uh, we would expect that build, but really the physical damage from the Chaos Knight is pretty much negligible at this point in the game, even with the overcharge. He really needs that Reality Rift Chaos Bolt to finish someone off, and so I really don't worry for this Drow Ranger at all. Tornado's gonna go out. It is gonna land on Quista, but she's gonna stand in the face and finish off the tower. Ice Blast is gonna fly through. Blink forward from Quista, however, trying to take down Last Shorty, but just gonna zone him out for the time being, and Ice Blast is gonna whiff completely. We'll see the Chaos Knight and Klasinki and MDL trying to finish off this T1 in the bot lane. They do have the Glyph available, though, and they will commit three TPs here. Drum charge they're gonna try and back out coil on two however it's gonna pop from state 21 he's gonna get a waning rift on two magic missile will finish off the io klasinki turning and run tail with the armlet pop swap back from eknard onto shock and cuss of shock gonna hit him as well one big right click from state 21 
will bring him down. RNT is going to be found out in the river. There's a scream of pain. It's going to follow him. He can blink forward fairly soon as well. Not going to be able to cancel the TP though. Smart play from RNT and he'll make it away. But either way, two for nil going down and they save their tier one in the bot lane after taking down the tier two of Central of Fear. Well, at the very least, Central Fear kind of avoid disaster, not losing the Chaos Knight there. Mm -hmm. If that had happened as well, it's just... If Klesinki dies, like, let's say, one, maybe two times, without Central Fear getting a substantial enough team fight in their favor, it's maybe even just GG call at that point. Just because, yeah. it, of course, they cannot see the net worth, but just look at the heroes. Queen of Pain, I mean, doesn't have too much, but still has more than four of Central of Fear. And now Klesinki, he's gonna be the target of a gang. Krista will get the slows to begin with. Relocate, it's gonna save Klesinki. Thank God for that Mystic Player completely with thanks to that as well. They most yeah. likely will kill the IO or will they? Central Fear looks like they are kind of ready to fight RNT coming in as well. He will have the Blink Ravage. Yeah, they're gonna jump back with both of them. Instant Phantasm. The Frost Arrows will go out onto the Wisp. He should be able to bring him down. Krista with his BKB pop. Very nice waning rift on three. Shock gonna be the next to fall. Krista blinking forward for that one. EMP is gonna land, but the Sonic Wave is huge. They will bring down Krista though, however, and the next to fall is the Queen of Pain. They'll be able to force back the Tide Hunter here, and a really big win for Scary Faces in that one. So oh, sorry close. for Central of Fear. Yeah, so close to actually killing off the Chaos Knight there. The Queen of Pain came in with an invis, was trying to look for the best possible angle for the Scream of Pain. Did get a pretty good one as well. Unfortunately, Puck wasn't there to properly follow up at the time. Had there been like a Dream Coil, something like that to be used. I think easy wipe in the favor of Scary Faces. And also, Tidehunter, he was so patient with the Ravage. He was waiting finally until the BKB wore off on row and then just easy Ravage, easy kills on row. Yeah, so with the Mask of Madness, the Anchor Smash did a hell of of a lot of damage as well to the draw so a little bit overzealous from quista to blink right on top of shock in the aa and does pay with his life so very nice win there for central of fear yeah it's it was definitely pretty damn good at this point but they need a hell of a lot more where that came from especially mm -hmm. since last shorty did go for the force they have no hand of miners to really properly catch up and they're not getting too much space to actually properly farm up at this point although scary faces at least they shouldn't be giving them the space they have a really good just pickup lineup. They can swap into magic missile. They can just puck blink dream coil. But of course they're facing a relocate, so it's always somewhat hard to go for ganks. Yeah, definitely. So uh, RNT gonna farm up some ancients here, so he's gonna find a four staff fairly soon of his own. That's a little bit of nice mobility for him. State Tony One gonna push out the top lane for now. He hasn't picked up anything since getting this minus, but he does have 3,200 gold in the bank at this point so perhaps just looking to see how the game pans out for the next minute or two and then seeing which build he's gonna opt for here uh, i still wouldn't mind the yules to dodge something like a ravage or as well as the chaos bolt but gives him a lot more survival he could opt for a dagon of course which is fairly good against uh, the aa and the io so we'll see what he ends up choosing it's probably like Yule, Stagon, or a straight of Hex. Mm -hmm. At least those are like the three items usually built. There's a small chance that you might go for an Aghanims as well. Especially since no BKBs are coming out. Although Chaos Knight might be going for one. Definitely wouldn't be a bad choice, I guess. So we'll see, but Aghanims Scepter is finished on Shadow Work. Has the level 2 Scream of Pain as well. So 40 second cooldown. He can start throwing them out left and right now. Yeah, 450 pure damage is half the HP pool of the IO with a Scream of Pain and anything pretty much from the Skywrath or the Ventral Spirit or even a couple right clicks from the draw. They'll bring down this IO very quickly. And in that sense, the Chaos Knight is going to be hard pressed to find a lot of his damage and survivability. So, yeah, I, I, I feel that they'll prioritize either the Tide or the IO in these engagements, whichever is a little bit more out of position. So, Quista still has a 9 second BKB at this point, still very survivable. 3k gold as well. Roshan is not up for about a minute and a half at this point so a minute and 15 seconds to be exact on that spawn so they will be able to pick that up rather easily it seems as long as they keep decent vision the radiant side does have vision entering the pit so as long as they don't come down this little alleyway uh, they will be spotted out so let's say that central fear hold on for another 20 minutes Mm -hmm. So at like 40-45 minutes in, two scary faces actually have enough AoE to deal with a Chaos Knight. 
Mm, yeah, with a level three, with the level three Sonic Wave with the Aghanims upgrade, I feel like they they probably should. But even just the main Chaos Knight will be pretty scary. I mean, with the Armlet toggled, he's got a Reaver in his inventory as well. So with the Armlet toggled, you're looking at something like 2,400 HP for each of these illusions, uh, as well as his main hero. So definitely something for them to be worried about, uh, as you mentioned. But still, I feel if they bring down the IO and they don't get a massive Ravage, Scary Faces should win most of these engagements. Uh, they have three silences to work with in the Gusta Waning Rift and the Ancient Seal, so they should be able to at least pop the Ancient Seal on the Tidehunter. Well, the thing is, if you pop the Ancient Seal, you're going to have to make sure that you're not damaging the Tidehunter after that, just to make mm -hmm. sure his Kraken Shell doesn't take off the Ancient Seal. Right. So it might be a little bit hard, although they don't have the craziest amount of AoE to go around with, so it might not be that big of a worry for them. But Roshan is up now. Not too sure if Central Fear are aware of the fact, but they're close enough to go and contest if need be. And Scary Faces, if they just go for Roche and they have too many heroes actually in the pit, suddenly there's like a Blink Ravage, all of them get caught. Maybe Krista can be fast enough with his PKB activation, but it's going to take quite something. Tornado will come out first, scouting things, hitting Krista as well. So they know somebody is in the Roche pit. They've even smoked up themselves. Well, Central Fear, can they finally get that one just huge fight for them? Oh, the Ravage came out, there's the Relocate as well, they're gonna go for two. Although Klasinki did get stunned up, nobody's dead so far, Klasinki dropping so damn low to the Mystic Flare. Eknard will go down, the three second Chaos Bolt will bring him down, Sonic Wave catches two I do believe. It's enough to kill off three all together in the back lines. RNT, pretty damn tanky but Krista, the life still too much from the Mask of Manas. La Shorty will be next. The Ravage, it was pretty good but the follow up was just lacking. Yeah, definitely lacking there. Very nice Ravage. Beautiful Sonic Wave from range from Shadow A. Finishes off the IO. Gets the Chaos Knight for Klasinki down to one last right click. And they only lose the Vengeful Spirit for that. So the, the Roche will be slightly slower than usual. But either way, big team fight win and the Roche on. I'm surprised not to see Klasinki rage quit out of this one. But either way, Ice Pot's going to fly through. Is going to whiff completely, it seems. Unfortunately for Shock. But either way... They can look to perhaps push this tier 2 at this point, but the respawn timer is pretty low 25 minutes into the game. So in that fight, Invoker, he got like an EMP down after that uh, Ravage, but EMP, mm -hmm. yes, it does some damage, drains some mana, but it's just not that big of a deal. Yeah. Usually if you go for Wex, you're going to have to snowball more or less. You're going to have to get an early Orchid, for example, yes, go around yes. the map killing people. I think that was kind of the plan as well, get the Orchid against Puck, against Queen of Pain, excellent item, but just he's nowhere near it, I'm probably not even going for one, might be Hex now, and oh, they're gonna find RNT, nope, never mind. Krista, I guess they didn't have proper vision and he just wanted to farm blinking in like that. Yeah, he did pick up an Eagle Song as well, so the Butterfly gonna be out fairly soon, that'll make him ever the more survivable against this Chaos Knight, doesn't have the greatest raw HP pool right now. But he can toggle his treads over now that he has the completed butterfly to strength. Uh, and he still will give a lot of damage over to his teammates through that precision aura. Looks like they will group up mid lane here looking to push this tier 2. Shadow A going to join the fray here. Is building into a BKB of his own with that ogre club. And once they have those BKBs, as long as they don't get hit by the ravage as they did in the bottom fight, they should be able to roll through these team fights against Central Fear's lineup. Yeah, and there's a Shivas as well on the puck, so more AoE damage. Limiting the physical damage output of Central of Fear. Also some more AoE to just kill off the illusions of Chaos Knight. I don't know. It, I think there's just too much pressure on the shoulders of Klasinki at the moment to carry this yeah. game on the hero that he has. Yeah, he's really the only one relevant at all, especially in terms of net worth. Uh, Shadow A's off lane, Queen of Pain above both the Tidehunter and the mid lane Invoker for Laz Shorty. And Abash is not too far off them on the Skyrath Mage. He's actually picked up two components of his Rod of Atos so far, so only needs the one more Staff of Wizardry for that. Also has the Urn and the Arcane Boots, so that's going to be a pretty nice item for them uh, to keep perhaps the IO in close range or the AA, one of the targets that they need to burst down. And uh, with that tether move speed, uh, the slow will be pretty valuable to them. Oh god, Klasinki state silent stream code to follow up as well, Shadow. He comes in, Sonic Wave pop with the Mystic Flare. Oh god, they just, they cannot lose that hero. And I have no idea why Io actually wasn't with him. Why the hell was mm -hmm. Io solo top at the time? Because <laughs> the Wisp is really good at pushing out waves, man. Do you know that? <laughs> it's got all those spirits. Yeah, you can totally relocate to the safety of your base. Just uh, with, with a one downside, you're going to be back I, in 12 seconds. That, that makes no sense. I mean, they really should be 
uh, butt buddies for lack of a better term the entire game uh, Shadow A may run into RNT here, but no, just walks by. Rod of Atos is now complete for a bash on the Skywrath Mage, so. Oh god. Life is going to be so hard, and they're gonna go for RNT. Can they blink? Frost arrows? Yes, they can. Krista finds RNT. RNT tried to turn around, but there's the cast. Gets the crack at you, but look at the damage output! He just goes down. My god. Yeah. For a second, it felt like there's a Daedalus or something, but no, he's just hitting for 400. Yeah, casual 400, you know. Not that bad at all, but either way, yeah, the tornado so underwhelming there, even trying to zone them out with that, uh, with that uh, invoker being as low leveled as he is. Currently level 14, 8,000 net worth. Uh, on his way to a hex swap back though, magic missile, ancient seal, couple right clicks, last shorty is pretty much dead bkb gonna be popped here the io dropping very low gonna get absolutely blown up sonic wave is there ravage gonna hit on three but quista still under the cover of bkb his bkb will pop now he'll shatter to the ice blast but that's only the aegis he's gonna come back klasinki is gonna chop one down that'll be shadow way and they are turning and running tail here so with the phantasm gus gonna be thrown out blink back from the puck state 21 may have the cold feet proc on him here reality rift not gonna land as quista gets the fog barely he'll be able to blink out and they end up only bringing down, I believe, oh, they forced three buybacks. So I was going to say it was three for three, but it's a four for three. Three buybacks coming out from the side of Essential of Fear. So very costly defense there. But they do keep up Klasinki throughout it all. Yeah, and also they got the Aegis down and row. So that's also like another thing to consider there. <laughs> uh, it, it was just the fact that they did not deal with Klasinki. The Sonic Wave, it hit on all the illusions yet did fail to just connect on the hero himself. Yeah. So a little bit unfortunate. The follow-up really wasn't there properly either. They were going for different heroes. And the Ravage, it was beautiful. It connected at the minimum on four heroes. Maybe even caught the fifth at the edge somewhere, but... Finally, they take like a decent-ish fighter. As good of a fight as can be expected with the just... Oh god. They're fighting up against a 20k plus net worth deficit and XP close enough to 20k as well. So considering that, decent enough fight but scary faces they're just gonna come again knowing that the ravage is on cooldown and same for phantasm yeah quista surviving there is almost it, it is still very good for scary faces just as equivalent as klasinki surviving for central of fear and they will go right back into mid lane blink forward waning rift is gonna be all that the, she wrote for now they will just chip down on this tier three uncontested no glyph available and they'll take that for free. Quista gonna go onto the high ground with his seven second BKB on cooldown. Freshly picked up Daedalus as well. Tornado is gonna land out, but the BKB gonna be popped by Quista. He's gonna run forward and can take one out real quick. That's the IO. Shock gonna have to be forced back. Blink forward from Quista. He'll finish him off though. Chaos Bolt is gonna be caught under Mask of Madness. Reality Rift should be there. Couple right clicks. Quista gonna get swapped back though. Beautiful play by Eknar. Big Sonic Wave. Mystic Flare. They'll finish off Klasinki. That's a triple kill for Quista. RNT the next to fall. And that's a five man wipe. First central of fear in another lane of racks gonna go down in the bottom lane. Beautiful swap back by Eknar keeping up the draw ranger there. I was thinking there, do they have any four staffs? Anything to try to get Krista to safety? And the thing is that the swap came out after the chaos spot, after the reality rift, so there was nothing chaos central fear could even do to just still follow up on the mm. draw even when he got swapped back. Also, Sonic Wave, I do believe it connected on all three there as well. Or yes, the Sonic Wave, so just Excellent games. The second and the third one. Scary Face is looking just so damn good. Yeah, beautifully played. Well drafted as well. Five range heroes around the Drow Ranger. And absolutely dominant mid lane by State 21. Invoker an absolute non-factor in this one. Laz Shorty with a couple of real stinkers in the last two games. And well played by Scary Faces after a demoralizing loss in game one to come back with two convincing wins. One in 11 minutes, one in 31 in games two and three. Yeah, so this is going to be it for this particular series. We're going to have another coming up in about 30 minutes time. It is going to be Knotek versus Stonky Dota. So mm -hmm. also a best of three, also for the lower bracket. So don't go anywhere. I'm going to keep the stream running anyway because there's just no point to close it when it's this close. So in about 30 minutes, another best of three coming up. I do believe... Yes? No? He He versus Kawaii will be going on on Heflight TV 2 as well. They are also heading towards game number three. It is the JDL Division 1 and 2 playoffs. So check that out in the meantime as we're going to have a 30 minute break anyway. Heflight TV 2 on Twitch. Just like the channel here, just change the one to a two. 
And if you liked us and want to see more of us in general, follow Hefla TV on Facebook and Twitter. It is Hefla TV for both. For me, it's at Coucher. And for my co-caster, it's MRP underscore Dota. You can find it in the title as well. And any last words? Uh, nothing much. Just well played by Scary Faces. Thanks for having me, guys. Thank you for the support. Be sure to follow the stream if you enjoyed the cast. Yeah, so guys, just a few songs or I, I guess a few is an understatement, but music until the next series starts. GG, guys.